what's been happening in Latin America, North and Brazil. Here's our update for Q1 2024. So where in the world are we? Well, we're in this region here. And you can see the countries involved go from Trinidad and Tobago through Guyana, Suriname and Brazil. Don't have anything for uh, French Guiana today. Now in Trinidad... Well, BP Trinidad and Tobago, BPTT, they've been development drilling. Uh, it's underway at the Cypress field, and you can see here's the subsea layout for it. It's the first of seven planned production wells spudded back at the end of February. Uh, it's in the East Mayaro block, offshore southeast Trinidad, in about 80 metres of water. It's the third subsea development for BPTT. They plan to... Uh, put in place two 14 kilometer flow lines and tie uh, the field back to the Juniper platform. First gas is expected in 2025 and at its peak, well, it's expected that uh, gas production will be in the order of 250 to 300 million scuffs per day. Now, uh, also in Trinidad, we can talk about the uh, the Dragon Deal. You can see on the map here, here's the Dragon Field, here's the Hibiscus. So Trinidad um, is trying to halt its declining production. And there's been a, a, a US $1 billion deal to develop the Dragon via a tieback to the Hibiscus facilities. Now, this was put on hold in 2020 by uh, US sanctions partly because some of this is in uh, Venezuela and some of it's in Trinidad. Now, the US has actually granted an exemption to those sanctions in late 2023, which has allowed Trinidad and Tobago and Venezuela to, to jointly get on and try and develop these gas fields. Now, the Dragon uh, deals, 30-year uh, deal, could see gas exported as soon as 2027 from uh, Trinidad and Tobago's Atlantic LNG plant. Now, uh, that's it on the map uh, down here right in the southwest of Trinidad. Shell plan to survey the dragon field in April 2024, and uh, they will make uh, uh, an FID decision shortly following that. Now, moving on swiftly to Guyana. So in Guyana, well, we have the fourth FPSO, the One Guyana, which has arrived in Singapore, ready for integration. It should be able to produce uh, another 250,000 barrels of oil per day from the Starbrook block. And in this time, it's going on to the Yellowtail uh, development. A startup first oil expected in 2025. You can see the graphic on the right here. This is showing that uh, right now... Um, anticipated that Guyana is, has got perhaps one of the largest crude oil number of barrels being produced per capita of, of anywhere in the world. Quite an amazing turnaround and uh, quite a, an amazing story for this country. Also in Guyana, well, we have uh, Bluefin highlighted here down in the, uh, the, the, the south east corner of the Starbrook block and it's Exxon Mobil's first discovery of 2024. They found a 60 meter hydrocarbon bearing sandstone. It was drilled with the Stenner Drill Max in a water depth of 1,294 meters. So this is deep water. It's about 8.5 kilometers southeast of the Sailfin number one well. Now, also in the same block, Guyana's oil production, it's reached 645,000 barrels of oil per day from the Starbrook block um, as of the 7th of February 2024. And that's only going to go one way. It's going to increase through time. Now, of course, this is the block that is involved in the uh, this, the Chevron deal to, uh, to, to basically merge, take over Hess. And uh, it's basically... Uh, ExxonMobil have uh, have looked to exploring a right of first refusal for um, the Hess stake in this block. So there's a preemption clause that they're trying to exercise. So that's going to go on for for quite some time. Now um, there are ten potential FBOs um, from just the existing discoveries that could be used in here. So as you can see, the partnership is ExxonMobil, forty five percent operating. Uh, the Chinese National Corporation at 25% and it's currently Hess but um, was or is to be Chevron when the uh, preemption issue gets resolved. Again in block here's Whiptail which is, uh, has come to FID so uh, an investment decision so it's the sixth project in the Starbrook block and it's uh, expected to add another quarter of a million barrels of oil per day capacity by the end of 2027. Now, it's a $12.7 billion 
project with up to 10 drill centers and 48 production and injection wells. So this is another huge field. The FPSO Jaguar under construction by SBM Offshore. We've talked about the operator ship, so let's move on. If you want to read a little more about the uh, Exxon preemption of Hess's uh, stake in the Starbrook block, well, pause the video. Now, tensions uh, have been high between Venezuela and Guyana. Exxon Mobil said, well, they're going to continue exploring. They're not going to be worrying about these territorial claims that are ongoing. Exxon Mobil plans two new exploration wells off the Atlantic coast, west of the Lisa field. And uh, Guyana not approving uh, drilling until a UN court ruling. So the situation here shown on this map, and it's a contested region. It's some historic going back to 18 oat cake, whatever it is. And you can see on the one hand, Guyana has been uh, had its borders in place. Nobody was worried about it until along comes oil and uh, potentially huge value. And it's piqued Venezuela's interest. Now, they have fortunately agreed that uh, they will not use force to settle a dispute over the oil-rich region of uh, Esquibo, but um, let's hope for hopefully that this gets resolved uh, before too long and uh, the, the other battle of ownership of um, the Hess stake in the Starbrook block, it too gets resolved before too long. Moving on down to Suriname. And in Suriname, we've got the uh, the second shallow license round. Get in touch with Mike Lakin at uh, Envoy if you want to find out more information on this. It's the uh, it was launched in 2023. Uh, the bids were due by the 31st of May. 11 blocks on offer, and uh, they're all under an initial three years term. But uh, we'll have an update out on this before too long. It's the third ceremonies uh, bid round held since 2020, and it follows on from the shallow offshore bid round in 2020, 2021, and the Demerara bid round of 2022-23. Given the interest that was shown in these rounds, the uh, with blocks awarded to companies like uh, Total Energy, Chevron Shell, and Qatar Energy, the second shallow water round is also expected to, res to receive significant attention. Bear in mind that we have all these oil fields uh, in the uh, in, in this uh, region here in Block 58 and lots and lots of shows. And of course, as we go onshore, here are the onshore fields, Calcutta and Tamareggio. So th these are, there's, there's, the question is, is there oil in between these two? Well, this oil almost certainly came from a lot further offshore to the north. So oil must have passed through these blocks. So companies were getting together to try and see if they could uh, pre-fund uh, seismic uh, over uh, this, this region. Pause the video if you want more information about that. But in terms of updates, Block 52, the Fusia exploration well spudded in February of 2024. It's a 50-50 JV uh, with uh, Petronas and ExxonMobil using the uh, Noble Voyager drill ship. And uh, it's a one well assignment. A rig swap was made instead of using the Noble Discoverer semi sub, which had previously been selected. Now, this follows a Roystonia discovery in November of 2023, which found oil bearing Campanian sandstones. Slovenia was the first discovery on the block in 2020, and an appraisal well is also planned in 635 meters water depth. Good luck to ExxonMobil and Petronas in that block. Moving on to uh, Brazil, I'm going to start by looking at the Potiguar Basin. This is the equatorial margin and uh, discovery there. It's the Pitu Est in the uh, Potiguar Basin uh, using the uh, ODN2 drill ship. The license is the uh, BM POT17. It's a deep water block and hangar. Spudded in February and targeting a stratigraphic trap, turbidite sands, in a water depth of 1,180 metres. It's also uh, been declared as a discovery, so uh, congratulations to Petrobras. Also in Brazil, if you go down to the Espirito Santo Basin, we can see that it's just north of the uh, prolific Campos and Santos Basin, and this is Petrobras um, the drilling a well in the basin here. It's spudded in February, and there's the drill ship they're using. Very uh, ultra-deep water well. It's the third well on the block. The first two were dry. Well, we would expect uh, around about the time we've made this video that uh, we should be approaching the business end of that well. 
Also in the Campos Basin, this is uh, Perenco with uh, 100% in this block. It's Brazil's uh, Pargo FSO, which has started operations offshore Brazil. The Pargo Cluster concession comprises the Pargo Carapaba and Vermelho fields in the shallow waters of the Campos Basin. Now, oil flows from the Pargo uh, platform to the um, floating storage offshore vessel uh, through a new 2.8 kilometer export pipeline. Current production around about 20,000 barrels a day. Also in the uh, Campos Basin, Petrobras have exercised um, a preferential bidding rights in the, in a pre-salt uh, area, and this is JASP. It's a, a large pre-salt structure with a prospective resource size of, of 2.5 billion barrels of oil equivalent. So uh, watch that space, and uh, we'll keep an eye out for when that's going to be drilled. In the Santos Basin, well, we've got the Mero 2 production has uh, started. It's Petrobras um, as operator. It's in the Libra bot block, um, 1,800 meters or deeper water depth, uh, using the Sepetiba FBSO, which has got a capacity of about 100, 180,000 barrels of oil. Part of the plan is to drill eight producers and eight injectors with Mero 4 and Mero 3 and 4 under. Um, construction so this is going to be a very prolific area as we go forward you can see the list of partners there and um, it's uh, it's up and running now in brazil uh, if we step back we can see there's been quite an exodus from the uh, from the pre-salt play so the companies uh, petrobras shell exxon mobil chevron and repsol they've all returned a lot of uh, exploration blocks on the fringes of the pre-salt play fairway offshore brazil Pause the video if you want to see more on that. So if you want to become a uh, subscriber, well, we've got global coverage. Today, we've just been looking at a small region of the world. Subscribers get all sorts of perks like uh, discounted consultancy rates, discounted uh, expansion of the uh, Trove subscriptions, um, free training, guide Trove development to suit your needs, and... Uh, quarterly updates in all the databases so that you stay up to date there is no value in an out of date database it needs to be kept up to date that's what we do at trove so get in touch if we look across the conjugate margin and a quick look at namibia remember we have a special introductory offer on for Namibia, only £3,950, and that gets you a year's worth of updates on all that's happening in offshore Namibia, all the historic wells, all the current wells, and all the future wells that are going to be drilled uh, in that time. It's a technical database, a scouting service. It's got analogs for anything uh, you, you might be looking at. And it's uh, basically one-stop shop, click, buttons and find all the information at your fingertips so in summary well we're always growing at trove all the key news and data from around the world if you want to become a subscriber there's the email address you do need the data if you want to explore produce and be successful thank you for watching i hope you found that interesting please hit the like subscribe and ring the bell hope to see you back on our channel before too long bye for now